Uh, hello, thank you everybody for coming. My name's Greg Smith and I'm a resident of Alexandria. Um, I'm also heartened, as I think most people in the room are, about the almost unanimous objection to uh, West Connects. Uh, you may have noticed in the question that, that, that was put to you on that that it was about what the city could do. It's one thing to blame other people for doing stuff or not doing stuff, but what can the city do? So I'm asking a very specific question. What powers will the city <coughs> exercise that it does have to protect local residents from the <coughs> effects of West Connects on our local residential streets? And may I flag that blaming the RNS, the Roads and Maritime Service, for being the responsible authority won't wash with this crowd because we do know that the RMS is responsible for arterial roads, but the City of Sydney has authority in respect of local residential streets. So I'm asking specifically, what specific measures would you commit to undertake to protect the local residential streets from West Connects? Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Um, quite simply, if the... Um if it hasn't been approved and the contractors turn up in your street, um, I, I, as a city councillor, would be wanting to stand there with you, with our rangers, and tell them to butter off because they should not be there. Now, if there's no approval being given, the city almost has a duty to its residents to stand with you to reject the encroachment of contractors into your space. Now, I mentioned before compulsory acquisitions. Now, if these compulsory acquisitions have not been properly followed through with, um, we, the city should be doing everything it can to assist residents to make sure that compliance has taken place. If it hasn't taken place, the city should be doing all it can to assist those people take the matter through the necessary court process to achieve justice. Thank you, Lindsay. Over to you, Adrian. Um, I would agree with Lindsay, if the uh, compulsory acquisitions have not been properly followed, then they should be followed and the city should advocate on behalf of those residents. But uh, when it comes to this, this project, uh, the state, uh, when it's a, a state significant, I'm getting the terminology wrong, but a state significant project, the state powers trump local government powers. So grandstanding and advocating through media releases does not work, uh, except for uh, increasing local vote perhaps. So I, I certainly know Christine would uh, seek a positive and collaborative, cooperative relationship with the state government to advocate on behalf of her local residents if they are genuinely aggrieved, which I understand you know, is not, wouldn't be a, a surprise if, if with a project this large if there were instances where that was happening. So uh, I think it really comes down to having a, a genuine desire to work cooperatively with the state government. Uh, thanks for your question, Greg. I think it's a really good one. I think that, you know, the council, of course, cannot control all of this, but of course there are many things that we can do. So uh, I don't think it's helpful to have a constant blame game. I think that, uh, and I have, of course, moved that the city do a range of things in relation to this. Um, uh, as I said, moved motions to protect the green space in Sydney Park, uh, moved and supported motions to commission the research to inform the community about uh, the difficulties that we're all going to in, uh, face when this project is rolled out as it is currently being uh, done so. Uh, we do have some powers around local uh, road approvals. Uh, we must continue to hold firm on those to ensure that these roads are maintained as important local routes for not just cars, but of course cycling. Uh, often, in fact, I have to walk on the road because there's bins all over the footpath. You know, that's what we all use these roads for and continue to have them as shared as possible. Uh, we also do, though, have to solve uh, many of the safety issues that will come. Uh, I've been dealing with an issue recently where uh, we had some children uh, trying to cross King Street to get to Newtown Public School where my son goes. Uh, the trucks parked across the lights that were red, they passed, parked across the intersection, uh, just straight through the middle of the intersection. And the kids not being able to go but for, in, but ahead of the truck or behind it just walked straight underneath. Terrifying, terrifying. Yeah, I'm going to cut you off yeah. if you don't mind. So, keep going. Uh, 
we need to deal with the safety of our roads as a council, with the things that we can control and with public education campaigns uh, where we don't have the jurisdiction. Thank you. That is an excellent question and it was um, the key of both questions actually on protecting and what the Harren Authority would have. Um, I'm going to apologise ahead, it's not a short question. Uh, does the Council have power and authority to protect residents when uh, especially state significant projects encroach on our smaller areas and our local streets? Yes, we do. Because part of that means better planning and making sure that we are vigilant and listening to and following up when these things happen. Whilst we don't have control over state significant projects, they are out of our hands. Those are some parts of those projects, not all of them. It is difficult because some things, for instance, um, I'm helping some residents who are undergoing uh, 18 months worth of road closure for some building works. And this is ridiculous that they won't have access to their own roads for such an extended amount of time. But these things go through the Traffic Calming Committee and, and lots of other stakeholder committees and it is almost impossible for residents to see or hear of them or have them flagged and it's almost impossible for councillors to see or hear of them and have them flagged. So we need to be vigilant. We can't ever relax when there are projects coming up. We need to see almost the ripple effect and anticipate where the safety concerns are going to be. We need to be smarter. We need to understand what amenity is going to be affected by our residents. Is it parking? Is it the safety of our children? Is it the accessibility for our residents? And deal with those upfront ASAP. It is too late when it has happened. But we do have the resources at Council, excellent resources, great staff, loads of IP, all of that we have. We are stakeholders on various committees. We should be more vigilant, we should be more attentive, and we should certainly have enough experience by now to preempt these issues on our local res residents and the small business owners. Right. Thank you, Ashley. I'm really concerned about a number of things that their government has done, um, particularly the overdevelopment of Barangaroo, particularly the wholesale eviction of people at Millers Point, things like the Powerhouse Museum and the Tibicotta Bridge. But I have to say, in all my years as a representative of the city, a member of parliament and, 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 and a councillor and mayor, that the West Connects project is the most damaging project to our community. You know, for the last 12 years, we've been pedestrianising our streets, we've been building bike lanes, we've been planting trees, we've been creating beautiful streetscapes. 58,000 square metres of landscaping in our streets. West Connects is going to deliver thousands of vehicles into our city. And we have not been told where they will go. And when I asked the, the chair of the delivery authority, he said, oh, they'll just disperse. And when the minister was asked where they'd go by, by John, Councillor John Mann, he said, oh, I don't really know the answer to that, John. So this is where we're at. And now we're seeing the numbers of vehicles that are going to be delivered, say, to Sydney Park. And, and, I, and I mentioned it. Currently, Euston Road, 7,000 vehicles. If West Connects goes ahead, it'll be 60,000 vehicles. We're not talking local roads. We're talking, talking uh, roads managed by the Roads and Maritime Service. Wide into six lanes and take cutting sways through our area. And, and all that lovely streetscape, all those cafes on the footpath, all those trees, all those parks, all be seriously impacted. That's why we will continue to fight this as long as we can. We have some grace because stage two, which will deliver all those cars to, to, uh, to St Peter's, has been deferred for a year. So it's not a year. I also know from my time in Parliament that, that things can happen politically and governments pull back on projects. And Premier Baird does not like the bad press he's getting on West Connects. And I tell you what, he's going to get some more.